Welcome to Abiding Presence Faith Community for Divine Worship for the fifth Sunday of Easter. We ask those that the church will silence their microphones. Our celebrant will be Father Lucas Brown. He's assisted by Deacon Chris Larson. Okay, sorry. Our celebrant will be Bishop William Cavins. He's by Father Lucas Brown and Deacon Chris Larson. The intention of today's liturgy is for the repose of the soul of Dana Dean Anderson. Our interest him today is five eight, sorry, five nine five, all the ends of the earth. God, the creating Father, and the redeeming Son, and the life-giving Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of the risen Christ, so rich in mercy and boundless in compassion, be with you all. And, and also with you. Through the waters of baptism, we die and rise with Christ anew. May this Easter water purify our hearts and draw us ever closer to the dwelling place of God. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, creator of all life, of body, and of soul, we ask you to bless us as we use this Easter water in faith. Forgive our sins and save us from all illness and the power of evil. Lord, in your mercy, give us living water, always springing up as a fountain of salvation. Free us, body and soul, from every danger and admit us to your presence in purity of heart. Grant this through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. Amen.
Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, look upon us with love. You redeem us and make us your children in Christ. Give us true freedom and bring us to the inheritance you promised, filling all ages with words of a new song. Hear the echo of this hymn and give us voice to sing your praise throughout this season of joy. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your only begotten one, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us be attentive. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. As a number of the disciples continued to grow, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. So the twelve called together the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God to serve at the table, brothers, select from among you seven reputable men filled with spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint to this task, whereas we shall devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The proposal was accepted to all the whole community. So they chose Stephen, a man filled with faith and Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Pinochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenius, and Nicholas of Anar, a covenant to Judah, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. Even a large group of priests were becoming obedient to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
a reading from the first letter of Saint Peter. Beloved, come to him, a living stone rejected by human beings, but chosen and precious in the sight of God. And like the living stones, let yourself be built into the spiritual house to be the holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, Behold, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in it shall not be put to shame. Therefore, its value is for you to have faith, but for you who is without faith, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, a stone that will make people stumble and a rock that will make people fall. They stumble by disobeying the word as their destiny. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, that you may announce the praises of him who call out in the darkness to his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Father God, Bishop, give the blessing. Deacon, may the Lord God be upon your mind, upon your heart, upon your lips as you worthily proclaim this gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. John. Glory to, you, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I was going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you there myself. So that where I am going, you always may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you also know my father. From now on, you do, not, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the father and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been, have I been with you for so long a time and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever sees me has seen the father. How can you say, show me the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in with me? These words I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. 
the Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Well, believe because of the works themselves. And then, and then I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do. It will be greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Praise you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. <coughs> the stones are alive. Sounds like it should be a title of a horror movie, not something that we find in scripture. But that is exactly what we find in our scripture today. Coming from the Greek, lithos and ops, meaning stone and face. And while this is not referring to stones that are coming alive as we might think, but what's interesting is it actually is a legitimate item. And it actually refers to a succulent, to a plant of the ice plant variety and those of you there present in the chapel there are some plants around the paschal candle of a similar variety and these living plants were called that because they resembled stones and they would grow and were not eaten because they appeared much like a stone we find ourselves this sunday with some very thought-provoking readings coming from very different times. We have a gospel taken from Jesus and his teachings during the Last Supper. We have our first reading, which comes from the days following Pentecost. And then finally, we have a letter, letter from Peter when the word went out to the churches in Asia Minor, modern day Turkey, you know, the area north to the north and west of Jerusalem. And as we look at that letter from Peter, it's an ex excuse me, it's an ex excellent example of conveying the understanding of the mystery of church. Peter presents Christianity in a very simple life without complicated rules, simply that of loyalty and love. Most, For the most part, these communities have been fo founded by Paul and his helpers and co-workers, and they brought everybody together into one assembly one faith, one conception of life. Jews, Gentiles, everybody. And in addition, all of these that came to believe would not only change their spiritual beliefs, but also their social, you know, and their way of living their daily lives. So this would seem very different to those on the outside and thusly many suspected that these Christians had subversive morals so Peter goes on to say in his letter of being living stones and he quotes some very famous passages talking about the cornerstone and I shall build my church and we've heard this over and over but do we really understand what it means? For you see, the cornerstone was a very important part in masonry. And for those of you who were with us on Feast of St. Joseph, the bishop spoke about how Joseph was more of a you know, masonry type of builder than carpenter as we know it. For they worked with mud 
and stone. So having that cornerstone was integral to their building. And everything would be built upon that cornerstone. And everything would be orientated to that. An interesting little fact is churches, you know, the physical churches as they were developed over the centuries were all built to face one direction typically east the rising sun that the rising sun was that of also jesus and that is partly where the practice of the priest having his back to the congregation was that everybody was pointed in one direction everybody was orientated in one direction all of their prayers were orientated towards Christ. But times change. And thus we come to Peter's letter, that we must be living stones. We must adapt. We must be a living edifice that is constantly changing to what is needed. So... Luke tells us in our first reading that these seven men were chosen for a special role. They were called, ordained, to help take care of the widows. But more importantly, they were called to help those who were marginalized. Those who were basically outcast, forgotten of the church. And in scripture it says, because they could wait on tables, and the other apostles did not need to. I'm sorry, wait, hold on. We called seven people to wait on tables? Or, or is this a restaurant? I know, it sounds interesting. And as you look at different versions of the Bible, it actually is translated differently depending on the version of the Bible. The Greek word diakoneno means to serve. So it's not waiting on tables as if you went to Sonny's, but it is service. And while our scripture mentions food distribution, we're not actually imagining food pantries or banks. This was actually known as service of the table and literally meant that they were being excluded from being served at table as you heard me mention earlier these communities were small communities that were forming up and much like the last supper gathering at table was integral how many times throughout scripture did we see jesus go into somebody's home and gather at table. Think of a time that you've been invited to somebody's home and been served at table and had that conversation, that one-on-one -on -one interaction. This is the service that these seven were called to. And yet the interesting thing is we see Stephen, that wasn't exactly what he started out doing. Instead, he kind of was stirring things up, being a bit of a stumbling block. And in a day and age where so often there's so many things going on in the world, and we hear the constant our thoughts and prayers you know oh we'll pray for that situation you know we'll, we'll you know let, let's pray and that's fine but Stephen showed us that we must act that we must step in when others are acting against what is love what is hope when others are actually calling people to do evil, that we must, you know, be a stumbling block. 
Yes, we are to be a living stone, but sometimes that stone must be there to block what others are doing. And we come to our gospel. And it's, it's such a powerful piece where Jesus says, if you see me, you see the Father. And yet, that is exactly what each of us is called to do. We are filled in our baptism with the Holy Spirit. We are called to be priest, prophet, and king. And others should seek Jesus and thusly see God in us. So, as we go out this week, look for those opportunities to reach out to the marginalized, to reach out to those who are excluded. And how, rather than just offer prayer, we can offer action and be a living stone, a living example of Jesus Christ. Let us profess our faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Creator, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Redeemer, Jesus Christ, the only child of God, eternally begotten of the Creator, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. One in being with the Creator, through the Redeemer, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, was born of the Virgin Mary, and became human. For our sake, Jesus was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered, died, and was buried. And on the third day, he rose again, in fulfillment of the Scriptures, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God. Jesus Christ will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and the reign of God will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Sanctifier, the Giver of Life, who proceeds from the Creator and the Redeemer, and with them is worshipped and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, let us place our needs before the Lord. Our response will be, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. For churches throughout the world, that they may be a holy nation, a people Jesus can call his own, as we announce the praises of one one who called us out of the darkness and into his wonderful light. Let us pray to the risen Lord. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. risen. For the deacons of the church, that they may be filled with faith in the Holy Spirit as they proclaim the word of God and work diligently for God's kingdom. Let us pray to the risen Lord. Hallelujah, Christ, Christ is risen. risen. For national and civic leaders, that, they, that the plans of their hearts may be conformed to the kingdom of God, who is always creating a new order of peace, let us pray to the risen Lord. Hallelujah, Christ, Christ is risen. That God may keep our family and friends safe from harm, and that we may enter this new week with health and hope, let us pray to the risen Lord. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. For all who are suffering from sickness, anxiety, poverty, or grief, that the Lord, who is gracious and merciful, may show them great, great kindness and compassion, 
and graces of healing and joy, especially John Pavlovac, Edward Kirk, Michael Agostini, Stella Glover, Stephen Strobel, Colette Stork, uh, Andy Wachowski, Ulrika Strutman, uh, Father Paul White, Stephanie Lenoir, and William Cabin. Let us pray to the living Lord. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. For our faithfully departed ones, that Jesus, who has prepared a place for each of them, is in God's house, may now welcome them home into heavenly joy. Let us pray to the risen Lord. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The God of peace, you promised to create an everlasting home for us so that we may dwell with you forever. Hear our prayers that our hearts might rejoice at your saving help. We ask this through Christ, our resurrected Lord. Amen. 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 Our offer hymn is, Where My Father Lives, as found on the handout.
pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the, the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his God's name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. church. Let us pray. Lord God, by this holy exchange of gifts, you share with us your divine life. Grant that everything we do may be directed by the knowledge of your truth. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, you. with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give, give God, God thanks, thanks and praise. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation that we should always sing your glory, Lord. But we praise you with greater joy than ever in this Easter season when Christ became our Paschal sacrifice. He continues to offer himself for us to plead our cause before your throne. Christ is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore the universe resounds with Easter joy and the choirs of angels sing the endless hymn of your glory. Lord, you are holy indeed, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your only begotten one, Jesus Christ our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age you gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Lord our God, we humbly pray. By the power of your Spirit, sanctify these gifts we have brought before you, that they may become the body and blood of your only begotten one, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night Jesus was handed over to death, he took bread and he gave you thanks. He broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise and giving the cup to his disciples said take this all of you and drink from it this is the cup of my blood the blood of the new and everlasting covenant it will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven do this in memory of me Great is the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your Calling to mind, Lord God, the death your Christ endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, and eagerly awaiting the day of his return, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and see the victim by whose sacrifice you were pleased to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son 
may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. Let him make us an everlasting gift to you, that we may share in the inheritance of your saints, with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles, the martyrs, and all of your saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may this sacrifice, which has made our peace with you, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servants, the patriarchs of the East and of the West, Chris, our presiding bishop, Bill, our diocesan bishop, all bishops, priests, and deacons, all ministers of your church, and the entire people your son has gained for you. Merciful Creator, hear the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you, and unite to yourself all your children now scattered over the face of the earth. Welcome into your kingdom, our departed brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy with them your everlasting glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you give the world everything that is good. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Creator, forever and ever. United as brothers and sisters of the Lord, we dare to pray as Jesus our Savior taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 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 thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from all sin and anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. And forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, My peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on the sins of your faithful ones, but bring us all to your salvation. For Amen. Amen. Lord, Amen. the peace of the Lord be always with you. And always with you. with you. Let us now all open and sign in God's peace. Hey, brother. Peace be peace with you, with Father. You. Peace be with you, Deacon. Peace be with you, Klaus. The Lord's peace be with you. Peace be with you, Bishop. Your Excellency, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord as I take communion, I recommit my life, my, my heart, heart, 
my thoughts, my everything to you. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ bring us all to everlasting life. The table is prepared. Come, eat, and drink. Our communion, communion hymn is 659, Lead Me, Lord. Hymn of Thanksgiving is number 775. I will choose Christ. So true, my 
Mother during this Easter season, please join in singing 436. Regina Cherele. Merciful God, may these mysteries give us new purpose and bring us to new life in you. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us on this, the fifth Sunday of Easter. Just a reminder that we will be celebrating Ascension Thursday on Ascension Thursday. Uh, so I'll give you the mass time. I think it's either 6.30 or 7 o'clock on Thursday evening. May crowning. We will honor the Blessed Mother on Saturday, May the 13th, by crowning an image of her during our 10 a.m. Mass, celebrating her under the title of Our Lady of Fatima. This is this coming Saturday. Mother's Day is coming up on May 14th. Those wishing to have their mother living or deceased remembered at the altar should submit the names to the church office by tomorrow. So I can get the lists compiled. Now to bring you up on some happenings from the Board of Directors. You may recall that for Father Brown's ordination and for uh, Easter Vigil, we met at First United Church of Christ. The Board of Directors have been working with their Board of Directors and they have made a proposal to us. We've made a counter proposal of, of some sort, um, pretty close to what they had, just a few extra things. And their board of directors is going to be meeting today. And assuming the contract is agreed to, next Sunday, the 14th, we will meet at the First United Church of Christ. Oh. We will post those changes by email. We will uh, put it on Facebook. Um, we're probably going to do a Facebook advertising campaign so that other people in the area will know where we are going to be gathering. Our mass time will change, however. Since they have a 10 o'clock service, we were either looking at 7.30 in the morning or 12.30 in the afternoon to 12 30 in the afternoon 
instead of going out for brunch after mass, we'll gather for breakfast beforehand and we'll set out a little set out a blast as to where we're going to be. I think that brings us up to date. But yes, Kenny, it's we're very happy to uh, be able to grow beyond what the chapel does. The Lord be with you. Bow your hands and pray for God's blessing. Lord, help your people to seek you with all their hearts and to deserve what you promise. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of Almighty God, the creating Father, and of the redeeming Son, and of the life-giving Holy Spirit, come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Our closing hymn is number 438, Join in the Dance. This is the peace of God.